Hey everyone, this week I'm going to show you guys how to do this graphic punch out where we've got a graphic and in the negative space we're revealing an image behind. It could be a color, but <laughs> then what fun would that be? That would be the same as just having a colored graphic. So uh, for this tutorial you'll need an icon or some sort of logo or something like that. Uh, and I'm going to demonstrate how to do this as a vector graphic, meaning we can scale this to any size, we can zoom in no matter what screen size, no matter what device, uh, this graphic is going to look completely crisp because it's not made up of pixels. There's no inherent resolution of this image. It is an SVG file, a scalable vector graphic. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this in Illustrator, but if you're Photoshop users and you want to do this with a pixel-based graphic, you may do that as well. However, it'll look a heck of a lot better if you do it in Illustrator as an SVG. So let's get started. I'm going to close this and in Illustrator I have my logo and this logo is a single object. It's all merged together in one shape. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the Pathfinder, there's a panel here called the Pathfinder which we're going to use and uh, it's a way of combining and subtracting shapes from one another. So I've combined all of these shapes together using the very first button on the Pathfinder. Most simple icons are already going to be one shape, but if you have several objects, let me just create a few little circles here. These are three separate objects now, but if I select all of them and I hit the first button on the Pathfinder, they are now one object. It's different from a group. They're actually considered one compound path now, so I'm going to delete that. And now the idea is I need this logo to be punched out of the box that it's inside of. If we go take a look at Muse, uh, this is a white banner that has a logo punched out of it, revealing a banner behind that has an image inside it. So it's a little sandwich. So I'm going to go back to my blank demo page and switch over to Illustrator here so we can create that banner style um, punch out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm just going to click and drag a rectangle in the shape of a sort of banner here. And now I'm going to grab my selection tool and highlight both of these objects because first I want to get them centered up with one another. So there are a couple of ways to go about that. The easiest way is on the toolbar at the top of Illustrator. There is an align section and if your screen's big enough you'll see these across the toolbar. You won't have to click the word align. So I'm just going to center align these and vertically center align these. Now that I've done that um, I've got a color issue and I've got sort of an artboard issue. These are not aligned to the artboard and the artboard itself is larger. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to click on the artboard tool, which is the one over here that almost looks like a crop tool. And when I click on that and then I click on my box, it creates a new artboard around my box. And then I can click over here on my original artboard, artboard one, and I can delete that. So now I just have one artboard and that artboard is tightly wrapped around uh, my banner. So now I'm going to click away from this. I'm going to deselect both of these and I'm going to click back on my box, my rectangle. And I want to make that white because for my page it's going to end up being uh, completely white uh, with the exception of the logo in the middle. Now I need to send it to the back. Um, there are a couple of ways to go about this. I'm a fan of keyboard shortcuts. So for those of you who are on a PC, it's going to be control and the left bracket, which is the key next to the letter P on your keyboard. If you're on a Mac, it's command and the left bracket which is in the same spot to the right of the letter P. And now we've got our logo on top again. But our logo is black. Uh, at least in my case, my logo is black. Yours can be any color. It doesn't really matter. Um, but the point is, it's not punched out of the white. It's just black on top of white. So now I'm going to go back to selecting both of these. Uh, and with the graphic selected, and with the rectangle selected behind it, I'm going to go back to the Pathfinder. And again, you can pull up the Pathfinder from the Window menu if you don't see it anywhere on your screen. And then the second button on the Pathfinder is to subtract the front object from the back object. So you can see here that I've now deleted the shape of the logo from that white box. And I can now go ahead and save this in order to bring it over to uh, Adobe Muse. I'm going to click away to deselect it. And now it looks like it's just white because it's a white box on a white background. Uh, but I assure you that we've got it. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to choose Save As. And then now I'm going to throw it on my desktop. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it a Fuoco Logo Punch Out. And for the format at the bottom, we want to switch that to SVG. And once it's switched to SVG, it will be compatible with Adobe Muse. So on this screen, I don't need to change anything. Type SVG. That looks good. Image embed. Uh, I'm just going to click OK to get past that. And then I'm going to go back to Adobe Muse. And now in Adobe Muse, on my blank page here, I'll, del I'll delete this. I'll just go back a step here. 
Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just create a rectangle because I need to establish this, uh, this sort of banner here. And this banner is going to be 100% page width, uh, so it'll be somewhat responsive. It'll scale with the browser. So I just dragged it from edge to edge. If it's on the very edge of the gray on both sides, the very, very edge of our canvas artboard area, um, that's going to make it 100% page width. And you'll notice now when I drag it up and down, it actually locks in place. I can't even go side to side. It's now considered a 100% width object. So now that I've got this banner area defined, um, I'm going to make it a little bit taller here. I'm going to get rid of the stroke around it. I don't need that stroke. And I'm also going to hold Option or Alt and drag it so I have two of them. Um, it's white on white, so it's kind of hard to see. But I have one here and I have one here in the foreground. I'm going to select the first one, which is the one in the back. In my case, it's the one that's higher up because I option dragged down to create the second one on top. So uh, that's the one below, slightly below. Uh, so I'm going to select the one on top. I'm going to go to fill on the toolbar here. And I'm going to add an image as an image fill here. And I'm going to choose my background image. This is what's going to show through. This is what's going to show through in the graphic area. And I'm going to center align that. And then for size, I'm going to switch original size to scale to fill. So that way, as the browser gets larger, uh, the graphic is also going to get larger so we don't have any weird clipping issues. So scale to fill there. Uh, the other thing is my white background for that box is OK, uh, but not ideal. If there's a problem with that image loading, uh, I would like it to load a color. And I'm actually going to use the eyedropper tool here and sample this orange color from the background. So just in case the image doesn't load, uh, we'll at least have a color that fills that shape instead of white. Because we know what white on white looks like. Going back to Illustrator, that's what white on white looks like. Not so good. Not so exciting. So I'm going to switch back to Muse and I'm going to select my box that's in the front. And now with this box that's in the front, I'm going to go to Fill. I'm going to do the very same thing, Add Image. And now I'm going to go look for my SVG file that I saved. And I'll click Open. I'm also going to center align that. And I'm also going to switch this size to scale to fill. And now looking at it on the canvas, you can tell something is wrong. We've got white in white with a nasty fringe around it that doesn't look so good. And even if we preview this in the browser, it's invisible. It doesn't show up. Now the reason for that is that the graphic is transparent but we have the white fill inside the box. So it's showing through the graphic and showing the white that's behind the graphic. So we need to get rid of that white. So for color, we're going to switch it to the box with a red slash through it. That means no background color. That means transparent. So now when we see through the transparent graphic, we don't have a white obstacle be behind it. We just have the uh, image of the fire behind it in my case. Uh, so now I can position this and uh, see how it looks. Now there's one thing that we skipped, and I'm going to show you what the result of this looks like in skipping that step. As I scroll up and down, see the fire and the text go together. They move together, which makes it just look like a static graphic, which uh, for some people that might be okay, but that's kind, of a, that's kind of an odd way to do that if that was your goal. So I'm going to scoot this back down again, and I'm going to select my fire image. I'm going to go back to fill, and then there's this scroll tab at the top of the fill panel. And when I click on the scroll tab, there's a motion checkbox. I'm going to turn on the motion checkbox, and I'm going to make sure everything is set to zero. Keeps it simple, right? So now with everything set to zero, I've now defined that image as a non-scrolling object. So the image is going to stay still, but our logo is going to scroll up and down. So now as we scroll, we're revealing the image behind it. It's a pretty cool effect. It's sort of a, a depthy parallax scrolling effect without a lot of the headaches of parallax scrolling. And it's essentially responsive. No matter how large the screen is, it's going to look good. Now the thing to keep in mind, though, is that my banner is taller than my graphic. You'll notice my logo is quite a bit smaller. I've got these margins above and below. And uh, with that, I've got a little bit of room in case someone is on a wider computer screen and stretches this window horizontally because as the window stretches, the logo is going to grow. And if it grows beyond the height of the box, it's going to clip off the top and the bottom. So you do want your box to be generously large relative to your graphic or your logo. So now for those of you who want to do this with vector icons, um, I know a lot of you have the icon mega pack. Some of you went with the PNG files. Some of you went with the Muse only files. For those of you who want the vector edition, 
uh, today only for Cyber Monday. A lot, a lot of you may know today is Cyber Monday. If you go to museresources.com, it says today only. Find the hidden little gift icon for a half-priced Icon Mega Pack Vector Edition, so you guys can get all those Vector icons for the price of the uh, PNG icons that are not Vector. Uh, I'll give you guys the hint since you guys are watching this video. A lot of people are looking around for this little icon of a gift and no one can find it. So, since you guys are my loyal YouTube following, when you go to museresources.com and you're on the Icon Mega Pack page, which is linked in the banner, when you scroll down, you'll find one of the icons as a computer screen, and in that computer screen, you will find the gift icon. And when you click on that, it'll allow you to purchase at half price. It'll bring you straight to the uh, PayPal screen where you can put purchase for half price. So that's pretty cool. little gift for you guys for uh, the holidays. So happy holidays with that, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe if you have not subscribed already, and I will have more cool stuff coming soon. I promise I'll get more stuff out to you guys. And I also have more free re resources coming to museresources.com. Actually, uh, quite a few more. Some cool stuff coming soon, so keep an eye out for that. All right, guys. Happy holidays.